With apologies to Christmas and the holidays, for football fans, this may be the most wonderful time of the year. High school, college, and the pros start up their seasons, and Fox 43 is here to cover them all. Welcome to our pro football frenzy. I'm Todd Sadowski, and I'm joined by a handful of Fox 43 sports reporters to break down all of our local NFL teams. We'll use the assistance of the Locked On Podcast Network to go in-depth on the Eagles, Steelers, Ravens, and Commanders. We'll also highlight the former Nittany Lions to look for this season. Let's go around the studio and get a quick preview of what's to come. After an offseason of impact moves, the Philadelphia Eagles are looking to take the next step this season. I'm Kale Ahern, and I'm talking with Louis DiBiase about what to expect in year two with coach Nick Sirianni and quarterback Jalen Hurts at the helm, and if any of the team's additions will prove key to the team's success down the line. It's a season of change for the black and gold. I'm Ed Albert, and I'll be talking Steelers football with Christopher Carter. The quarterback position will be the biggest difference after 17 years with Ben Roethlisberger at the helm. Who will get the job? Plus, Christopher and I will talk about the struggles of the offensive line and will the defense have to carry the team this year. I'm Evan Brooks. It's the third year of the Ron Rivera era in Washington, and it's all about making the playoffs for the Commanders this season. Of course, the team made waves in the offseason, acquiring quarterback Carson Wentz, and his play is essential to reaching that goal. A breakout season from Wentz with the best set of playmakers he's had in his career should bode well for Washington and could be enough for the team to sneak into the playoffs this season. Have you heard the Nittany Lions have a few big names in the league? Yeah, just a couple. We preview some of the biggest who expect to have huge years or finally turn it on to reach expectations. Of course, though, defense leads the way. I'm on the Ravens, a franchise that always competes in the AFC North Division. Baltimore needs to avoid the injury bug and get back to power football. Lamar Jackson once again has multiple tight end targets, and the defense is especially strong in the secondary. Another strong draft should plug holes in the starting lineup, and the special teams is rock solid with the best kicker in the game, Justin Tucker, and Penn State rookie Jordan Stout takes over at punter. Let's begin the more in-depth season previews with Kale Ahern and the Eagles. There's a buzz around the Eagles after a number of high-profile offseason additions. However, the big question remains, can Jalen Hurts be Philadelphia's franchise signal caller? Let's fly, Eagles fly, with Louis DiBiase from Locked On Eagles. You've been at open practice. You, you've been to the preseason game in Cleveland. Tell, tell me what you've seen from this team so far. I'm really excited. Again, on paper, I thought this offseason, this team improved more than maybe anybody in the NFL outside of the quarterback position. That's still the biggest question. On defense, the personnel looks much improved. They look way more creative on that side of the ball to stop these high-octane offenses. And on offense, I mean, outside, you go back to 2010 with Michael Vick, Deshaun Jackson, Jeremy Macklin, and Deshaun McCoy. I can't tell you the last time this offense has had this kind of explosive young talent. So I think the sky's the limit for this team as long as number one at quarterback can make sure that he runs what I call the F1 car. The car is ready. They just need their, their driver to you know, take it to the ceiling it can get to. And right there with Jalen Hurts in the driver's seat is, is head coach Nick Sirianni and his coaching staff. And then they're headed into year two as, as a coaching staff. What are you expecting to see in terms of adjustments from them this coming season? Yeah, I think, you know, last year, Nick Sirianni starting off the season, the first six, seven weeks, they wanted to throw the football. They want to be a high volume, high efficient passing offense in the NFL, because that's what it takes to be a long term sustained championship contender. But Nick Sirianni and Shane Steichen, the offensive coordinator, they learned that Hertz and that entire offense wasn't ready to be that passing attack. So they ran the football in the second half more than any team in the NFL. They were the number one rushing offense. They went seven and two down the stretch and they made the playoffs. I think this coaching staff on both sides of the ball, they're going to maximize the strengths of their personnel, but they do have a set philosophy of who they want to be. You said the, the Philadelphia Eagles, they want to be a passing offense. And now with this group of receivers that they have, man, they really should be. Um, is this going to be the, finally the season that the Eagles have a 1,000 yard receiver for the first time in several, several years? It has not happened, Cal, since 2014 with Jeremy Macklin. Both guys, A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, have the potential to go over 1,000 yards. It's really not about them. It's about Jalen Hurts because I truthfully believe this is one of the best wide receiver duos in the NFL. And, Cal, I think this is the best receiver duo when it comes to a complete skill set and for their age the Eagles have ever had. We all know the conversation starts and ends with the Eagles when it comes to with Jalen Hurts. So uh, is it going to happen this year? Is he going to take that next step? Is he going to be able to elevate the Eagles to another uh, to a playoff win this 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 coming season? 
It's a great question, and he has to answer it this year because the Eagles have two first-round picks next year in a strong quarterback class. Like I said, this offense wants to throw the football. It's how you win championships. I'm not sure. I'm skeptical that he can be an elite quarterback, but I think he's going to be much improved from 2021. And this offense is much improved around him that even if they got the 2021 version of Jalen Hurts, that can still lead to a playoff win with this improved roster. I think it can even lead to a deep run. Is he going to be improved enough long-term? That's the big question that he's got to answer this year. The big topic heading into this season for the Pittsburgh Steelers is the quarterback position. Head coach Mike Tomlin says he won't pick a starter until after the final preseason game versus the Lions. However, as I spoke with Christopher Carter of Locked On Steelers about, the real issue could be the men charged with protecting the QB. They had a terrible performance against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and that's where everyone's kind of looking at right now, like, you know, is this offensive line going to need to be rebuilt in the middle of the season? That is the crux of the Steelers' issue on offense. Without solid offensive line play, it won't really matter who is taking the snaps as QB. Christopher Carter of the Locked On Steelers podcast and the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette saw the lines work throughout training camp. As a lineman, until that guy rushes you and you understand, you know, how long your arms are versus that opponent and how you, you know, how far of a drop back, how your feet need to be placed, how you work with the linemen that are next to you, whether it's on your right or your left shoulder or both, that all of that plays a factor into how you play. And I think that's what this offensive line needs is more time for them to gel. As it stands now, Pittsburgh's starting line will likely look like this. Dan Moore Jr., Kevin Dotson, Mason Cole, James Daniels, and Chunks Okorafor. After a poor showing in Jacksonville, Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin told reporters there wasn't enough detail from a fine motor skills standpoint. Details relative to their position. They didn't play with enough of an edge individually and collectively. Carter says Tomlin's callout was definitely heard. It was clear. like they, you know, It wasn't like, a, oh man, it was like a coach's right they're like, we have to step up. If we don't, this is going to be a rough season. We know that there's a lot, there's a bar that we're supposed to meet, and we did not meet it in that game. That's good to hear from them. Now, as far as how they respond, that's up to them. They have to respond in games. If the line can improve its run blocking for Najee Harris, it could help open the door for offensive coordinator Matt Canada to run more play action. Tomlin isn't tipping his hand yet on who will be the quarterback running those plays. Mitch Trubisky, who backed up Josh Allen in Buffalo last year, appears to have the edge as QB1 but rookie Kenny Pickett has shined in his playing time this preseason. Uh, I think Kenny Pickett has really made a good argument for him to be the QB2 in this in this offense and to be the guy that, you know, if Mitch Trubisky struggles or gets hurt, that the Steelers should take a chance on. Pickett and Mason Rudolph, the only quarterback who was on the Steelers roster from last year, have both looked capable of doing the job. They trust like, hey, Keep him around because he can be that guy to come through in a pinch when you need a change of pace at the quarterback position. On the other side of the ball, it appears the Steelers' defense will have to carry the load for the team this season. The D-line is deep with all-pro Cam Hayward, new addition Larry Ogunjobi, and Tyson Alualu completing the front three. I do think that they have a lot of potential to be a lot better than last year. Cam, Cam Hayward, I think, is still going to be Cam Hayward. He's still going to destroy people. I think Larry Ogunjobi is a very good guy to line up next to him. He can beat one-on-ones. He can be a consistent presence in the middle. Coming up, I'll have a season prediction and the Steelers players to watch. Ed Albert, Fox 43 Sports. Now we checked in with the Keystone State teams. Next up, the Ravens and the Commanders. What it will take for either of these squads to make a run at the playoffs. Coming up when the Fox 43 Pro Football Frenzy returns. We are back on the Pro Football Frenzy. The Ravens started fast in 2021 and look good at 8-3. A six-game losing skid followed with five of those losses by three points or less. Once again, they bolster the roster with a solid draft. And that's where we start our Ravens report with Locked On host Kevin Allstriker. They were able to secure Kyle Hamilton, the safety out of Notre Dame in the first round, who was expected to go nowhere near 14. He was a top five, top seven-ish guy. They then shocked the world and trade Marquise Brown of the Arizona Cardinals, get the 23rd pick, flip that for a couple other capital pieces in 25, and take Tyler Linderbaum, who best center prospect to come out of the college ranks in a couple of years now. You know, Creed Humphrey, another really good center coming out of there. But then the, the later round picks is where I think the Ravens did make their bread and butter here. When you move Marquise Brown, that says a lot about their faith in Rashad Bateman, right? And, you know, what, what he can do. So offensively, what does this team need to do 
other than stay healthy. That's the overwhelming theme for, for both sides of the ball. But what are you looking for? Obviously, they want to get back to the to the big ground game. Gus Edwards out a couple games, but J.K. Dobbins. So talk about offensively, Kevin, what you look for from this team right out of the box. We expect them to utilize their running backs a bit more in the past game this year. We, we kind of heard about it last offseason. J.K. Dobbins talked a bit about it. Gus Edwards as well before they went down with injuries. They brought in Mike Davis, who has been a pass catcher in his career. Tyler Beatty did a lot of great things as a pass catcher at Missouri. So I think they're going to utilize that. And that's also an extension of the run game. But at the end of the day, I think that with the way the draft went, obviously taking two tight ends, tra- trading away Marquise Brown, they do have the confidence in Rashad Bateman, James Brochet, Devin Duvernay, et cetera. They're not going to be just a completely ground team where they're never going to throw the football. Lamar Jackson is a very good quarterback, both throwing and running the ball. But I do think at the end of the day, they're going to try to go back to that ground game and see if they can establish that dominance again. You want to give me a record? Great. We'll always take that, right? That's fine. But something not bold, but something to look for, an individual, a breakout, a, a position group, something that, you know, maybe not be obvious, Kevin, that you're looking at and going, all right, I think this is really going to be some, some, some sort of a theme for the year for the Ravens. Yeah, I think there are a couple things you can look at. I mean, for, first, record-wise, I will give you a prediction. I think right okay. now. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah, Baltimore right now. I have them in a tie with Cincinnati for first place at 13 and four with Baltimore winning based off tiebreaker. So that's where I am right now. Obviously subject to change as we kind of figure out everything with cut down days and as the season approaches, but I, I am confident in them. And then individually, I think offensively, people are kind of wondering about the Isaiah likely stuff and saying, is this just the preseason? What's it going to be like when Mark Andrews is there? Is he going to still get a lot of run? Baltimore has been missing that third tight end aspect since Hayden Hurst left after the 2019 season. They were running Mark Andrews, Nick Boyle, and Hayden Hurst in in that bully ball three tight end set look, and it was great. Now, Isaiah likely does have a bit of work to do as a blocker. He is kind of working to clean up on that, but it is a one-two punch. I mean, I think Mark Andrews definitely is the number one pass catching option in this offense, in my opinion, has the potential to go over a thousand yards. Isaiah likely has the chance to maybe be right up there with him as the second or third leading receiver on this team. I think that Baltimore is going to get plenty of contributions from this rookie class, all the way from Kyle Hamilton to Tyler Beatty, their first and last picks in that draft. Don't take it from me on the potential the commanders have this season. Locked On podcast host Chris Russell knows the team inside and out. I sat down with him to get his thoughts on the team this season and find out if they have what it takes to make a jump this year. Let's talk a little bit about that offense. Obviously, we know, um, you know, Carson Wentz, new quarterback. Um, they seem really excited about their first-round pick, Jahan Dotson. Can they resemble those Kirk Cousins-led offenses or Robert Griffin-led offenses where they were, you know, the upper half of the league? I don't know if Carson Wentz is enough of a uh, go-on-an-absolute-tear-type quarterback, and maybe I'm wrong for that. You know, um, maybe at one point in his career he was – And I'm sure he's going to have games and series and quarters and halves where he looks really sharp. As far as the team on offense goes, you know, look, they had a big change at running back. I'm hopeful that that spurs positive results for both Brian Robinson and for Antonio Gibson. You mentioned Jahan Dotson. He had a couple of catches on Saturday in Kansas City. Uh, and you know, I, I think you look at the type of catches that he can provide and it's not just throwing deep down the field and having him go up and get it. It's bubble screens. It's slip screens. It's working around a tackle as he did against the chiefs. It's a shallow crossing route where nobody is even near him and he catches it in stride in place. And he turns, you know, basically what is a five, six, seven yard air pass into a 15, 20 yard gain almost in the snap of a finger. So these are the things that you're hopeful for. Now we have to see them all come together. It's still a little early, but um, just anything that you think, um, you know, bowl prediction wise that you can, you know, say and and hang your hat on that you think may come true this year. So I'll I'll say this, Logan Thomas going to play, I'll say 16 out of 17 games after an injury riddled 2021. I'll give you one other one. Um, I think Antonio Gibson at some point, at some point gets his crack to be RB1 again. Uh, After being benched and clearly having a reduction in his role, I wonder how they're going to use all of these chips and pieces when everyone's healthy. Final record prediction for the Commanders this season. There's glimpses of a really good football team. Glimpses. Those glimpses, Evan, have to turn into sustainable. sustainable moments or, or not moments, but, but uh, I guess patches, if you will, where 
it goes from one moment or two moments or or you know a, a little bit here and there to consistent and solid. And I don't know, based on what I've seen, based on what I know about the organization, I don't know if we're there yet. I, I don't know if we're ever going to get there, but I don't I don't sense that we're completely there yet um, in terms of doing that. And that's what the best teams do. So until I see that, I can't really go more than nine and eight, and that might be generous. Thanks, Evan. Next up, the Nittany Lions. Bunch of them are high performers at the highest level. Andrew Callista shows us some former members of the blue and white to watch on Sunday afternoons. Welcome back to the Fox 43 Pro Football Frenzy. When it comes to the NFL, Penn State will have plenty of names that are called throughout this season. And some of those names populate the rosters of our area teams. We'll start with the biggest name on the list. He may not be an Eagle, but he is well-versed in the NFC East. It's reigning defensive rookie of the year and former Harrisburg Cougar Cowboys linebacker Micah Parsons. He looks to tear up the league once again in year number two. And if camp is any indication, look out because Micah wants to be a legend. You look at all the great players like MJ, you look at LeBron, Kobe, they always have this drive to do something bigger than what's ever done before, and now I want this to go to waste, and I just want to be an example. Stay in the NFC East, former Nittany Lion running back Miles Sanders is the guy in Philly, according to head coach Nick Sirianni, and Sanders has already stated that he enters this year with something to prove. And speaking of Penn State backs for Saquon Barkley, it is go time in the Big Apple, as in go back to basics, hit the hole downhill, and run hard. From the pass catchers to the pass rushers, Ravens fans love second-year man Adafi Owe. 49 quarterback hurries and five sacks, and he enters year two looking for more and has a few new moves on the field. You might beat a guy the first week on one move or even in one series, but he's going to learn. You know, you got to have a counter to that and all that different stuff. And the guys are athletic. They replace well and stuff like that. So knowing that this year, it's helping me have counters to my fastballs. I didn't even mention Chris Godwin and Donovan Smith with the box. Trace McSorley with the Cardinals. Nick Scott with the Rams. The Steelers, Pat Fryermuth. Micah Sicky down in South Beach with the Dolphins. I could go on and on. This year sets up pretty nice for a lot of Nittany Lion Letterman to not only make the box score, but also the headlines. Thanks, Andrew. Of course, you will see all of your favorite local NFL teams during the season at some point on Fox 43. We are the Eagle Station. In addition to the Birds, you will see the Commanders since we carry the NFC matchups. And a few times every year, we get to show you the Ravens and the Steelers. Keep in touch with our NFL schedule online at fox43.com. And we told you what to expect this season, but now it's time to go big and go bold. The Fox 43 Pro Football Frenzy Team gives you some predictions that are sure to go right. Coming up after a short break. Or the best part of our Pro Football Frenzy season predictions, sure to go right. You got to have confidence when you go out on a limb. Let's send it around the room for some final thoughts before the first game on September 8th. The expectations are sky high for Eagles fans, and you can't blame them. I think we will see an improvement from quarterback Jalen Hurts this season, as he should be much more efficient in the passing game with the addition of A.J. Brown and continued growth from wide receiver Devonta Smith. On defense, the Eagles front seven has the most depth since its Super Bowl team. It's shaping up to be a tough group. Ultimately, I believe the Philadelphia Eagles will win the NFC East at 12-5 and, and find a way to win at least one playoff game this season. Expectations are always set high for Pittsburgh Steelers fans. Super Bowl or bust. This season, you have to look at it as a bust. This team is not built to go the distance. I think this will likely be an 8-9 and nine or 9-8 nine and eight season. Now, Mike Tomlin's never had a losing year as head coach, so he'll need to work hard to avoid that this year. But that doesn't mean that there will be a lack of excitement or intrigue this season. As we've talked about the quarterback position, seeing when or if Kenny Pickett plays will be something to watch. Also, keep an eye on the development of receiver George Pickens. And on the defensive side of the ball, playmaking safety Minka Fitzpatrick set a goal of being defensive player of the year. Let's see if he can do it. 
a lot of things have to go right this season for the Commanders to compete. My prediction for them this year is 10-7 and, and just sneaking into the playoffs as a 7 seed. One player to keep a close eye out on besides Jahan Dotson is William Jackson III, the big free agent cornerback signing last season who I expect to bounce back in a big way now that he is in his second year in the defense. But he's not the only player I like to see. Last year's first round pick, Jamin Davis, step up as well to warrant his 19th overall selection. A lot of ifs, but I do think the easiest schedule in the NFL helps them get out to a fast start and maybe win some games that they aren't expected to. For me, I'll focus on the Nittany Lions and for Penn State fans to watch their favorite alums. How does Chris Godwin bounce back from an injury? Some old-time players want Micah Parsons to validate his year one production. He will, trust me. And Penn State running backs need to step up and just be effective finally. I want to see Lancaster native Nick Scott continue to make plays for the Rams. Can go a lot of different ways with the Ravens. I'll start with Defensive Rookie of the Year. Safety Kyle Hamilton will be a finalist for the award and a likely winner. Speaking of likely, rookie tight end Isaiah Likely will score at least six touchdowns. Overall, I see the Ravens at 11-6 and six to earn a wild card spot in the AFC playoffs. And from there, all you need is a chance. Lamar Jackson desperately wants to improve on his playoff performances. And I believe he will get the chance later this year. For Kale, Ed, Andrew, and Evan, I'm Todd Sadowski. Thanks for watching Fox 43's Pro Football Frenzy.